back here, Phil, at the undisclosed location somewhere near the National Farms Museum. This isn't normally where we do Curator's Corner, but just like when you took us down into the vault, we're at a special location here for a special reason. You've got another wonderful treasure to show us. Tell us a little bit about, uh, give us a, a quick recap about what we're looking at here. Well, John, we're very fortunate indeed to have some uh, artifacts from Theodore Roosevelt's home, Sagamore Hill National Historic Site, on loan to us from the National Park Service for about a four-year period, three to four-year period. Uh, we're looking at uh, being able to provide uh, public access and viewing uh, to what we're calling trappings of an icon. Theodore Roosevelt, the Oval Office of the Summer White House. While the Park Service goes and renovates the actual Sagamore Hill home, we're able to uh, display these items down here in, uh, in Fairfax for a couple of years. Awesome. Let the public uh, south of the Mason-Dixon <laughs> line get a chance to see, uh, <laughs> well, and, see what these great things are. And, and the trappings are awesome. We've already seen a hat, a sword, the, the tunic, uh, incredible flag, that we're actually sitting it in front of now but so so it's not only firearms but it's just really is trapping it's amazing treasures of this iconic man so so tell us what are we looking at this week well john we uh we brought out a, a nice uh winchester model 94 again with most of theodore's uh guns nothing's off the rack no. uh, this is a uh a takedown 94 which means this uh barrel comes off from the receiver you can put it in a little suitcase has a half mag here. Uh, this uh, this is the takedown mag that allows you to pop the gun in half. Uh, it does have a crescent butt, which is unusual. Most Theodore liked his shotgun butt uh, mm -hmm. guns, but he also uh, liked raised cheek pieces. He uh, generally had, you know, color case hardening or, or engraving, uh, deluxe wood hand checkered. That's not really on this gun. Uh, but uh, one of the interesting uh, features of this is the fact that it has a, uh, a threaded barrel. Okay, and why is that? Well, John, you know, when you're the, uh, the president of the United States, or from 1909 to his death in 1919, the former president of the United right. States, uh, and you're enjoying your afternoons at Sagamore Hill, uh, yard work comes into play, and... and uh, Clearing the property of varmints oh. was uh, something that he, he enjoyed doing. I'm sure he took that seriously, too. He did. Mm -hmm. uh, it, but, you know, when you're using a 30-30 to clear varmints uh, and you live where you do on the north shore of Long Island, Long Island. <laughs> you Bay. know, it kind of puts the DuPonts, the Lewis Comfort Tiffany's, <laughs> uh, some of these other neighbors that you have off. So uh, we're hearing loud noises uh, uh, before breakfast. Uh, so what we've got here, John, is a... Uh, a very simply attached Maxim silencer wow. uh, that the president <laughs> actually used uh, used on the property up there uh, to, to keep things quiet, not to disturb T, uh, while he uh, while he took target practice and cleared cleared the property of varmints and such. So not as a fancy a farm as other ones, but a very functional farm that he used. Uh, quite a lot, I'll bet you, and, and and with the extra added functionality of the silencer there. There's actually a photograph of him uh, astride a, a, a horse uh, with the uh, the rifle right over uh, the pommel of the saddle, uh, ready ready for use. So give us an idea, uh, Sagamore Hill. I mean, for those who haven't been there, uh, to be clearing varmints, it's it's a pretty good size property. Sagamore Hill is an estate. Uh, literally, it runs right down into uh, uh, Long Island Sound. Uh, it's a, a beautiful piece of real estate. Uh, Oyster Bay, the North Shore, it's just a, a wonderful environment. Uh, Theodore used to, to round the, uh, the six kids up, uh, take a couple of rowboats, and go on a pirate's breakfast. They would leave uh, right before dawn. Uh, they would row across uh, you know, part of the, uh, the sound to an island. They'd build a campfire have breakfast, he'd tell stories, and then they'd come back, you know, before noon. Then he'd uh, grab this with a silencer and take care of a little yard work, a little light work. Yeah. Wow. Put another rabbit in the pot. <laughs> incredible, incredible man, incredible treasures of an icon. And how, do we, how can we come see that while it's available here at the Farns Museum? Well, John, uh, Theodore Roosevelt's collection will be on display in the Beretta Gallery, uh, the copy of the Roosevelt Library that we have at the National Firearms Museum. Uh, 
from 9.30 to 5, beginning in late May, early June uh, 2012. Right. Uh, seven days a week, free admission, plenty of parking. We're located right off Interstate 66 and U.S. Route 50. If you can't visit us off the interstate, visit us on the Internet at nramuseum.com. And, and, Phil, as, as if there aren't enough... Uh, reasons to come to this this national treasure of the firearms museum the peterson gallery everything else going on hollywood guns now we have this so if you don't get here during your summer plans or spring plans then shame on you because you got to get here and see this you know it's a limited limited viewing uh probably three years yeah. you know or so and that's going to go by quicker than you can blink uh hollywood guns is here the peterson collections on permanent uh exhibit and uh, and the the Roosevelt items, it's uh, the triple crown of uh, of great exhibits. Love it, and thank you, Phil, for sharing it with us. We feel we're very honored that you shared this uh, little private look here in, into these be beautiful items. We have more to come, so let's stop here and come back with more from this great Teddy Roosevelt series. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, John.